Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram of a simply supported beam that is subjected to uniformly distributed load. So to begin with, let us draw a simply supported beam. Okay, here we go. So this is our simply supported beam. So uh, this indicates that the beam is simply supported of a length L. It's a unit can be in meters and a moment of inertia I. It's a unit can be in meter raised to the power 4. In drawing the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, we will not be using the moment of inertia. Okay. And uh, the beam is made of a material that has got an X modulus value of magnitude capital E. Let's say that its unit is Newton per meter square or gigapascal or megapascal, whichever way it would be conducive for you. Now, what is the stuff that is acting on the beam? The beam is subjected to a uniformly distributed load. That's the uniformly distributed load. And what is the magnitude of this uniformly distributed load? It's W Newton per meter, which means over a span of uh, one meter, the total load that is acting on the beam is uh, W. So this yellow squiggles indicates the uniformly uh, distributed load. Now let us draw the shear force and bending moment diagram. So I will draw uh, these two lines. So I'm going to draw my shear force diagram here. And I'm going to draw my bending moment diagram here. So this is going to be my SFD. This is going to be my BMD. Okay. <clears throat> So the first step to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram is to find the reactions at the support. So this will be the first step. It is to find the reactions. Okay, there are two supports. We will say this is support A, this is support B. And according to Newton's third law, the total load is equal to the reaction load. For every reaction, there is going to be an equal and opposite reaction. So the sum of the two reactions, that will be Ra plus Rb. And if that is going to be equal to the total load, which is, you know, the total load uh, over a span of 1 meter, the load is W. So over a span of L meters, the total load will be W into L. So this is going to be our first equation. All right. Now there are two unknowns in this equation, Ra and Rb. If there are two unknowns, we need two equations to solve them. So how do you get the second equation? For equilibrium, the moment of all the forces about the point A can be equated to zero. So I'm saying the moment of all the forces about point A can be equated to zero. You, you see, the moment of all the forces about any point can be equal to zero for equilibrium. If the, not only point A, you can actually take the moment of all the forces about point B or about the midpoint or even about a point outside of the beam. Uh, the meaning of the moment, if it is not equal to zero, say for example, if the moment is not equal to zero about the point A, then the beam is going to rotate about the point A with respect to an axis that is protruding from the plane, right? So that is the meaning. So for equilibrium, the moment should be equal to zero uh, about any point. If it is not equal to zero about any point, the beam is going to rotate about that point. Fine. So let us find the moment now. In order to find the moment, let us try to first find the moment due to the UDL, right? The moment due to UDL. So the entire UDL can be assumed to act at the center of the beam. Uh, to be very precise, the word that I have to use is the entire UDL can be assumed to act at the centroid, right? And the centroid, because it's a perfectly symmetrical loading, and because the loading is also uniform, 
the centroid is going to be at the center. So that is represented by this dashed white arrow. So the entire load due to the UDL is assumed to act at the center. And the distance from the center to the point A is obviously L by 2. Fine. Now the total load will be W into L. So the moment above the point A, if it is equal to 0, now watch it very carefully. What is the type of moment that it is exerting above the point A? You see, this white arrow, it causes actually a clockwise moment. I can represent that by the blue arrow here. It causes a clockwise moment above the point A. So that is clockwise. So by convention, what I would do is I will put a plus sign because it is exerting a clockwise moment. So it is plus, moment is forced into perpendicular distance. So moment is forces WL and it is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force. See, it is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force. So this is the line of action of the force. I think you were able to see that. Maybe if I use red color, that would be obvious. So this is the line of action of the force. And the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the point A is actually L by 2. So force into perpendicular distance and that is WL into the perpendicular distance is L over 2. That's right. Okay, and the next force is RB, the reaction. And RB, I can use um, an you know, you know, L or it causes an anti-clockwise moment about the point A right or B so that's why we say that we put a minus sign the forces are B and the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the point A is L for equilibrium that should be equal to zero okay so this immediately gives us the value of R yeah this is immediately going to give us the value of R B so the value of R B is equal to so we can cancel the L okay if you divide this equation left and right by L and if you throw this term to the right hand side you are going to get W L over 2 okay and the value of R A if you substitute the value of R B in equation number 1 you are going to get the value of R A as W L over 2 so this is the standard procedure to find the values of the reactions. But if you are smart, you will immediately notice that, well, the loading is symmetrical. So the support is also symmetrical. So you can say very clearly that the supports are going to share the total load. So the total load is WL. So half of the total load will be shared by support A and the other half will be shared by support B. So that's a very simple procedure. Okay, now let us try to find the draw the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram so this page is a bit cluttered so what i will do i will use a separate page so this is our beam it's simply supported it is subjected to a udl of magnitude w so i'm going to contain my shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram between these two lines so I will first draw the shear force diagram. Okay. In order to draw the shear force diagram, what I do is first I'm going to discern a section. Maybe you can look for red color. Uh, this is a section that I'm going to discern. Maybe I can call this section XX. And this section XX, let us say that it is at a distance of X from the left extreme end. And I'm going to find out what is the shear force at the section xx? At the section xx. So in order to find the shear force at the section xx, I can either consider all the forces on the left hand side or I can consider all the forces on the right hand side. So let me consider all the forces on the right hand side. And what are the total forces that are acting on the right hand side? You see, the total force, if this distance is uh, L minus x because the total length is L, so this distance is L minus X. So the total load is W Newton per meter. So over a span of L minus 
uh, x meters, the total load is going to be W into L minus x. That's right. And it is acting in the downward direction, so I will introduce a negative sign there. And there is one more force that is RB, and it, that is going in the upward direction, so I'll put plus sign. And that value is WL over 2. So this is the total load that is acting on the right-hand side of the section XX. Can we simplify this even further? Yes, it's possible. It's going to be minus WL plus WL by 2. It's going to be minus WL by 2. Okay. And minus W into X, that's going to be plus W into X. So this is the equation uh, that represents the shear force. This is the equation that represents the shear force. And you see, no matter where you are moving the section XX, between the point A and the point B, no matter where you are moving the section XX, this equation, you are going to end up with the same expression, right? If you even if you are shifting the section xx a little bit towards the left side or towards the right side or more sharply towards the left side or right side, you are going to end up with the same equation. So this equation is actually valid between the point A and B. So it's valid between A and B. So since it is valid between A and B, what I will do is first I will try to find the shear force at the extreme positions and let us see what comes out. Shear force at A, which means when the value of X becomes zero. Let us see what happens uh, to the value of the shear force when X is equal to zero. Okay, when the value of X is equal to zero, what happens to the above equation is it's just going to be minus WL over 2. By convention, this is the rule. If you are getting negative sign, and if you are considering the forces on the right-hand side, you have to plot this value above the datum line. So this is our datum line, and I'm going to plot it above the datum line. So it's WL over 2. Also note that this equation, there, are, there is no X, is term, X is squared term, there is an X term, it's a linear term. So this equation, the shear force diagram is going to vary in a linear fashion, which means it's going to be a straight line. So that is very important. So now let me find the shear force at the right extreme end, shear force at X is equal to L. So when you put X is equal to L, what is going to happen to this equation? When you put x is equal to L, you will get minus WL by 2 plus WL, and that is plus WL over 2. The value is positive. You are getting, you have assumed the forces on the right-hand side. You have to plot it below the datum line. All right. So you have to plot it below the datum line. Now, how do you join these two points? It is WL over 2. How do you join these two points? Well, by using a straight line, obviously. <clears throat> so this is the shear force diagram. Now, there is a point where the shear force actually becomes zero. So how do you find that point? Well, you just have to equate this expression for shear force to zero and find out what is the value of x. So let us do that. It is minus WL over two plus WX and that is Okay, that is equal to zero. So you are going to get Wx, you can cancel W on the left hand side and the right hand side, and uh, you will be getting the value of X as L over two, which means exactly at the center of the beam, the value of the shear force changes sign. So uh, at exactly at X is equal to L over two, the value of the shear force is changing its sign. It's becoming zero and it changes its sign. Okay, this is the way you draw the shear force diagram. So you may want to shed it. So you can see that the shear force is zero at the center and the shear force is maximum at the left hand side and the right hand side and it decreases in a very linear fashion towards the center. All right, now let us draw the bending moment diagram. So here is our beam. It's simply supported. 
it is subjected to a uniformly distributed load of magnitude w that's right so i'm going to draw the bending moment diagram here and in exactly the same ma manner i'm going to discern a section xx at a distance of x from the left hand side okay and i'm going to draw the bending moment diagram so let me fi first find the bending moment at the section xx now this time just for a change i can consider the forces on the right hand side or on the left hand side but this time what i'm going to do is i'm going to consider the force on the left hand side of the beam so uh, the forces are here it is wl over 2 it's wl over 2 and if i'm considering the forces on the left hand side the first force is well it's the reaction at the point a and that causes a clockwise moment about the section xx so moment is forced at a perpendicular distance the force is wl over 2 perpendicular distance is x all right then this entire udl maybe i can represent that by the by the red line this entire udl can be assumed to act at the center right because we are considering all the forces on the left hand side if you consider all the forces on the left hand side the total UDL you are considering on the left hand side can be assumed to act at the center of the span X because it is actually acting at the center right okay so does it cause a clockwise moment or anti-clockwise moment obviously it causes an anti-clockwise moment so I have to put a minus sign and the force is total forces W into X that's right W into X W is the force that is acting over a span of 1 meter. It's W Newton per meter. So over a span of X meters, it's W into X. And it is assumed to act at the center. And from the center to this uh, section XX, the distance is going to be half. It's X by 2. So WX into X by 2. It causes an anticlockwise, so I have introduced a negative sign. So let me simplify this. It's going to be WLX over 2 minus w x square over 2 so this is an equation that is valid between the point a and the point b so this is the point a this is the point b between the two supports this equation is valid so i can write a statement saying this equation is valid between the point a and b and note down one more point that you have to note down it's not straight line because there is a square term the bending moment diagram is going to vary in a parabolic fashion or a quadratic fashion so that is the way in which the bending moment diagram is going to vary so let me plot the bending moment diagram so what i first do is i'm going to first find the bending moment at the left extreme end so bending moment at the point at x is equal to zero when you put x is equal to 0 in this equation the value is 0 oh my okay fine so at left extreme end the value is actually 0 right now what is the value of bending moment at the right extreme end so what you do is when you put the value of x as l then what happens to this equation if you just plug the value of x as l in this equation you get w l squared over 2 minus wl squared over 2 that is also 0 so even at the right extreme end the value of the bending moment is actually 0 now in between how do you think the bending moment varies well it varies in a parabolic fashion so let us try to find what is the maximum value of the bending moment we can either use the principle of maxima and minima right we can use the principle of maxima and minima so what i what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to differentiate the bending moment equation and equate it to zero so that's the concept of maxima and minima so our bending moment equation is w l x over 2 so this is our bending moment it is w l x over 2 minus w x square over 2 and what i am going to do is i'm going to differentiate this equation with respect to x 
and equate it to 0, if you do that, you get WL over 2 minus 2 into WX over 2 and equate it to 0. So you are going to get the value of X. W can be goes away. The value of X is L over 2. So at the center, exactly at the center, the bending moment becomes maximum. So let us try to find the maximum value of the bending moment. So bending moment at x is equal to L over 2. If you just plug this value of x is equal to L over 2 in this equation, so what is that you are going to get? You are going to get W L square. Okay, I'm sorry about the terrible handwriting. Maybe I'll try to write again. So it's at x is equal to L over 2, you are going to get W L square over 4, right? 2 times 2, that's 4, minus W into L square divided by 4 into 2, that's 8. And if you simplify this and take the LCM, you are going to get W L square all right you are going to get W L square over 8 if you take the LCM and if you simplify you are going to get W L square over 8 so that's the value of the maximum bending moment and is the value positive or negative well the value is positive and you have considered the forces on the left hand side by convention you have to plot it above the datum line if the value is positive and if you have considered it on the right hand side you have to plot it below if the value is positive and if you are considering it on the left hand side you have to plot it above all right so that's the maximum value of the bending moment it's w l square over eight and uh, of course the bending moment varies in a parabolic fashion so that's a parabola so that is our bending moment diagram and you can see that the bending moment is varying in a parabolic fashion and it is zero on the support and it is maximum at the center and if you compare the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram you can see that the place where the shear force becomes zero that is the place where the bending moment becomes maximum so you can actually find the value of the maximum bending moment by the concept of uh, maxima and minima by differentiating the bending moment equation and equating it to zero or you can find the value of the maximum uh, bending moment the location by equating the shear force to zero uh, that is the place where the bending moment is going to be maxima so this is our shear force diagram and this is the bending moment diagram you can find that find you can draw the diagrams by discerning a section and you can either consider the forces on the left hand side or you can consider the forces on the left right hand side the by convention if you are considering the forces on the left hand side and if you are getting the values as positive then you have to plot it above if you are considering the forces on the left hand side and if the value is a negative you have to plot it below it is the opposite if you consider on the right hand side which means if you are considering the forces on the right hand side if the value is positive you have to plot it below if you are considering the forces on the right hand side if the value is negative you have to plot it above also remember for cantilever beam you have to consider the forces on the right hand side because on the left hand side sometimes people overlook the concentrated moment so to be on the safe side you consider all the forces on the right hand side thank you all for your patience thank you so much